Hallelujah. This is not the place that need to be excused to praise God. Anybody got a praise left in them? Hallelujah. No song, no song, but you just got a praise down in you. Let me see your praise. Of just, just give God whatever praise you got. The best praise you got. Just give God just a little bit of praise right here. Just give him a little bit right here. If he's done enough already, just give him a little bit of praise. Oh, glory, glory. I got a couple of minutes. Let me get to my text. Hallelujah. He's healing somebody right now. Ugh, glory to God. I thank God for, thank God for the Holy Ghost. I thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for my bishop and pastor. Bless God for the bishops and overseers and the pastor bishop. God bless you, everybody. My wife, love you, baby. Love my friends, family. Let's get to the book. Isaiah chapter 53 is the text. You heard my words. I got seven words to work with. My time is moving, but it's all right. Isaiah, bless God, was a prophet from Judah. He served four kings in his ministry. The name Isaiah actually means Jehovah has saved. He's nicknamed the Prince of Prophets. He functioned as a prophet for at least 60 years from 740 to 680 BC. 60 years of prophecy, 60 years of prophetic ministry, 60 years dealing with various types of leadership. Four kings he served. He served Uzziah. You remember Uzziah? Yeah. Uzziah's name means power of Jehovah. He was a kingly, uh, he was a godly king, pardon me. He was a city builder and a strategic general. The Bible says he was prosperous and he was famous. He was marvelously helped of God until he was strong. In 2 Chronicles 26, it says that his heart was lifted up and similar to the rebellion of Korah, he pressed to burn incense before the Lord. And instead of killing him, God showed mercy and only struck him with leprosy. This was an example of transgression. Jotham was the second king. His name meant Jehovah is upright or is perfect. He was a godly king as well. He built towers and castles and forests and he built cities in Judah. He was wealthy. He was skilled in war, but unlike his father, he knew to leave the priesthood alone. Right. He didn't do what his father did. And you have to realize that just because they're in leadership does not mean you mimic everything they do. Paul had enough sense to tell Timothy, he said, follow me as I, y'all know y'all Bible, good. Jotham, Jotham, he was good, he was a good king. Then there was Ahaz, Ahaz was problematic. His name meant possessing or possessor. This went through me problems because this name had nothing to do with God. He was an ungodly king. He was weak-minded, covetous, devoted to idolatry. He destroyed the vessels in the house of God, locked the doors of the house of God, murdered his own children, burning them in the fire. Idolatry was the downfall of the nation under his reign. Right. This is Ahaz. Hezekiah, you remember Hezekiah? His name meant Jehovah is my strength. Is God anybody's strength in here? Jehovah is my strength. He reigned for 29 years. He opened the doors of worship, restored order in the church. He restored worship and revival. He restored the vessels that Ahaz destroyed, and he destroyed the idols that Ahaz had erected. I want to talk to you about the leadership that Isaiah had to face. He prophesied for how many years? 60 years of prophetic ministry. The kings that I read to you, their years that they served as kings was about 113. When you take 113 minus 60, you get 53, and we're in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 tonight. Isaiah blows my mind, saints of God, because he, 
he, we know he was a prophet. We know prophets were those that could hear a word from the Lord, and they were those that could see into the spirit realm. They could see and they could hear. That's why they were known as see ears. And so prophet Isaiah had a vision that was beyond his time. He had a vision of the Messiah. Not only did he have a vision of the Messiah, but he had a vision of the finished work of Calvary. He looked into the future. The Bible says that he spoke about the coming of Christ. He had to see Christ some 700 years before Christ would even be born. This is 2000 and if God were to open your eyes and let you see something 700 years from now, it would be 2714. We would see it, and the way we might describe it would be, he will be wounded. Because it's a far off. It's hundreds of years before the event even occurs. So we would see it because it is happening and say, he will be wounded. You might be so deep that you're actually at the event in the realm of the spirit and say he is being wounded for our transgressions. As the Bishop Isaiah saw this thing so far into the future, to him it was past tense. He looked over his shoulder in time and said, but he was wounded. It didn't even happen yet, but he said he was wounded. 700 years before it even happened to Isaiah, it was behind him. It already happened. He said, but he was wounded. When you step into the prophetic, you don't speak in light of time. You speak in light of truth. You, you don't deal with time. You deal with truth. Truth is not a thing. Truth is a person. Jesus said, I am the way. I am. And I am. No man comes to the Father, but you shall know the. And the will make you. As we read this text, we're, we're reading it in English, but the writer, the, the, the prophet is thinking and he's speaking in Hebrew. The word wounded in the Hebrew is the word halal. And the word halal means to be pierced through. To be pierced through. I needed that because when you have a root problem, a surface solution won't do. When you have a tamanda bohoshada, don't act like you ain't got no problems up and through here. Don't act like you didn't need the blood to come and wash you too. Ah, I, I needed something that would go beyond the surface and get to the root cause of my dilemma. He was pierced through that's critical because you have a epidermal layer to your skin then there's a dermal layer to your skin there's a hypodermal level to your skin and that's where the blood and the capillaries are see as long as he was bruised on the surface it didn't help me the way i needed to be helped i needed blood i said i needed the blood Maybe you don't need the blood. I needed the blood for some of the stuff. I did. I needed the blood for some of the stuff. I thought I needed the blood for some of the places I went. I needed the blood. Since he was wounded, it freed the blood that freed me. When, when, when he was pierced through, it released the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Not only does the prophet see the Christ was wounded, he knows why he was wounded. Not only was he pierced through, he tells us why he was pierced through. Why was he pierced through? I'm glad you asked that question. Well, let me deal with the, 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 the piercing. Isaiah was transparent in his prophecy. He says, but he was wounded 